In Creole Parametric, you can use the Analysis Transform tool to find the difference in orientation and translation between two coordinate systems. Now, to be honest, I've never had a cause to use this when I was working in industry, but in the interest of being a completist and showing every single command that's available in Creole Parametric, let's take a look at it. So here I am in an assembly model. There are a whole bunch of coordinate systems that I have visible. And so to activate the transform tool, you can go to the analysis tab. And then from the measure dropdown, here we have transform. And so now we are going to select two coordinate systems using the control key. So let me start off by selecting my assembly default coordinate system. And then I'm going to pick one of the coordinate systems for the injector, which is clearly at a different orientation and location. And so you get this little dialog box that opens up. It doesn't really do anything. You can move it out of the way. And then in the measure transform dialog box, we can see the results. And so we have essentially a four by three matrix over here. And so in order to understand what these numbers mean, MathCAD, red alert. MathCAD, red alert. PTC MathCAD, please report to the dance floor. PTC MathCAD, please report to the dance floor. Okay, like I mentioned, we get a matrix that is returned. It's essentially 12 different values in here. And so the first column, it has three numbers, and this defines the direction of the x-axis. And then in the second column, that defines the direction of the y-axis. And this third column here, it technically defines the direction of the z-axis, but really the z-axis is determined by the right-hand rule. So this third column is not used. And the fourth column, that is the translation from the first coordinate system to the second coordinate system. Okay, let's jump back to Creo. All right, so there we have the different values in here, and there is a little options button, and if you click on that options button, you can see that we have the units that we're using. In this case, length is going to be in millimeters. There is the option here to show the feature tab. Yes, you could store this as a feature in the model if you have the behavioral modeling extension. Let me cancel out of here. And now I'm gonna click on the information button. And when you click on that information button, it's going to open up a dialog box here, this information window. Really, it's kind of a crude looking old text window, but there is something that you can do with this. If you go to the file dropdown menu, you can choose to save this. And I'm gonna save this in my working directory. And this is for my injector. So I'm gonna call this injector dot TRF and the TRF, I assume that means transformation file. So anyhow, let me click the okay button and then close out of here. Oh yeah, also there's this option in here to transform in the active model units only. And that is an option that's only available in assembly mode. It says it's going to use the units and coordinate system of the active model. In this particular situation, my top level assembly is the active model. All right, let's take a look at a couple more examples. If you take a look in the list of references, there is a blue dot next to the second coordinate system. What that means is that I don't have to hold down the control key if I want to use the same original coordinate system and I want to change what we are measuring to. And so I decide that I want to do that. I will select this one over here for the exhaust manifold. You can see how the numbers change for the orientation and the distance. And I'm gonna save this one as well, just so I'm gonna have some additional results to show you in a moment. So let me call this the exhaust.trf. Oops, didn't activate the little cell. Okay, and I'm gonna speed through doing this one more time. Again, the blue dot right here is next to the exhaust. Let me select this other one over here, and then I will click on the information button, and let's save this one as well. I'm gonna save this one as the intake.trf. And I'm saving this to show you what you can do with these values later on. 
All right, so this is good for those three different transforms. Now let's create a brand new part. I will click on the new button and I will call this my engine reference. And I'll use my default template. And so now I'm going to create a coordinate system from those TRF files. And to do that, well, you can go to the coordinate system command from the ribbon and then from the origin, I'm going to select this as the default coordinate system. And then we have the offset type. And then from this drop down list, you can change the offset type from the default Cartesian to from file. And so now I will grab the first one that I made for the injector and then open that. And we can see that we've got our offset values listed in here. And there we have the orientation tab. Let me click the OK button. And so that is the intake coordinate system. Oh, let me actually rename that, seeing as I want to be able to distinguish between them. Actually, that was for the injectors. Okay, let's do that a couple more times. Let's go to coordinate system. And let me select a reference coordinate system, like my default coordinate system. And then from file, let me use the exhaust TRF file. And let me go to the properties tab this time, and then type in exhaust for the name of this feature and hit the enter key and then okay. And one last time for our third one. Oops, let me hit the cancel button out of there. I still had it selected. Let me go to the coordinate system and select my default coordinate system. And then from file, let me select my intake and hit the open button. Let me go to the properties tab and type in intake and then click the OK button. And so that way I've got my default coordinate system, my part coordinate system, and then the coordinate system for those other different uh, locations in the model. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I've never had a practical use for this in industry. If you have, please let me know how you've used it. I suspect that people use it for this really bad assembly modeling technique that I call the universal coordinate system for components. It ends up defeating the parametric nature of Creo Parametric. But anyhow, if you use this tool, let me know how you use it. So there you have it. That's how you can use the transform tool as well as create some coordinate systems from the results.